Over at the big government website, Winton Hall, listen to this. Senator Dianne Frankenfeinstein, a.k.a. Feinstein, loaded up on biotech stocks just before this company received $24 million in a government grant. With a new congressional insider trading scandal unfolding in Washington, another name has been added to the hit parade, U.S. Senator Dianne Frankenfeinstein. In the new book, Throw Them All Out, investigative reporter and Breitbart editor Peter Schweizer reveals that on November 18, 2009, Frankenfeinstein and her husband, Mr. Frankenfeinstein, invested $1 million into Amris Biotechnologies, a so-called green company focused on plant-based renewable fuels and chemicals. The Frankenfeinstein's million-dollar investment was their only stock transaction for the entire year. Feinstein, however, had good reason to feel that all her investment eggs were secure in the biotech basket because just weeks after her seven-figure investment in Amaris, the, the company scored a $24 million grant from the Department of Energy to build a pilot plant where altered yeast would turn sugar into hydrocarbons. The company went public the following year with an IPO that raked in $85 million dollars. Currently, it's unclear how much money Feinstein made and her husband off their investment. But it's safe to say that they did well, concludes Schweizer. Damn it, these people should be going to prison. I am not kidding. You want to know why millionaires and billionaires want to run for office? Because they want power, ladies and gentlemen. If they're not outright crooks, by any definition in the private sector... They're power-hungry utopians who want to control what our society looks like, who want to push you around. That's how they get their adrenaline. And it's sick, and we're tired of it. Feinstein, Pelosi, this one and that one, skimming us all the time. Don't you mean scamming? No, I mean skimming off the top of the taxpayer. Stealing us blind. Moving money around. So much money we can't even keep track of it. Building an army of bureaucrats. Loyal voters. Changing the citizenship in this country. More loyal voters. It's just sickening. Oh, it's coincidence. It's just a coincidence. The Pelosi's with the IPO with Visa... The Feinsteins, an IPO with a green, a green company, of course, they're all green, when in fact this whole damn thing is red. I mean, this country, they're barely keeping the lid on this country. I'm, I'm not trying to, to provoke anything. I'm analyzing this. People are losing their homes. They're losing their jobs if they haven't already. The so-called middle-class way of life is deteriorating. Things that we used to rely on and believe in, we no longer do. Meanwhile, look how the government treats us. We can't pick our own doctors. We can't pick our own food. We can't drive the automobile we wish to drive. This is not the same country it was 25, 30 years ago. It's just not. And I have a zero tolerance level for what's going on now. Zero. The media. The media are exactly what I said to you and what I've written in Liberty and Tyranny. The media are the propagandists for statism. When is the last time you saw a documentary on the, on the greatness, I've talked about this before, of capitalism, of the free market system? Never. You never see it. The last time I saw it was when Milton Friedman had a multi-part series on, on the pubic broadcasting system, PBS, on his book Free to Choose. Since then, I haven't seen anything. What do they teach our kids in school? 
about redistribution. Oh, they don't call it socialism. About radical, no-growth, flat-earth environmentalism. This stuff is beaten into our kids' minds, figuratively, day in and day out. That which has made America great, unless you're teaching it to them, unless you, the parents and the grandparents, are teaching it to them, they're not going to hear it. They're not going to hear it from the class, in the uh, teacher in the classroom. They're not going to hear it at an assembly. They're not going to hear it from their senator, their congressman, or their president for sure. So it's you or they don't get it. Meanwhile, they're stuffing their pockets with cash and telling you to sacrifice. Joe Biden is charging the Secret Service for a little shack, for a little property. He's charging them. He's getting rent. Meanwhile, you have to have skin in the game. That moron going on and on. All right, folks, we'll be right back. 